Well, welcome back to Big Board. Isolation day number four billion, it feels like. <clears throat> I thought it'd uh, be interesting to have a look at the victory conditions for the campaign, including the expansion, and just see what is what, where the points are, what dates those points are due, what the sudden death considerations look like, and things of that nature. One of the mistakes I had made uh, from some of my prior play, and I probably owe you guys a short video on the Omaha uh, little uh, landing exercise that I went through. I, I thought the breakout scenario started on the 10th of June, but it does not. It starts on the PM turn of the 7th of June, so the day after or the night after the initial landings. So. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to transfer the units to Omaha or onto the big maps. I'm just going to place them per the scenario exercise. Uh, whatever the setup instructions are there, you know, we'll just we'll just go through that exercise uh, as per as per normal. But I was I was kind of looking forward to doing that because I had done quite well. Uh, but anyway, we'll uh, we'll worry about that when the time comes. I'm I'm still debating whether I'm going to set this whole thing up or not. There's a substantial amount of counters, and with the expansion, there's a bunch of new uh, counters and breakdowns as well that I have yet to really find very much uh, more information on. So, like AT uh, breakdowns, and now there's some. I think these are. I don't know what these are for actually. I think these might be if you become mechanized. I I, I don't recall. And there's all these other <clears throat> units here as well that need to be applied and used. I believe they're just breakdowns but I'm not certain. And then these additional units have to be factored into the game as well, and none of which I have punched. So there's that. Uh, when I purchased the game, it was organized by date of arrival, and we've got that still squared away, but these additional new counters, I've got to check and make sure they all sink in. Anyway, let's get, let's get, to, let's get to the, the landing, uh, the uh, victory point conditions and things of that nature. So <clears throat> in order to secure a sudden death victory, which is always fun to try and do, uh, the first or earliest opportunity for that is the 9th of June. And a win, if you were to stop on the 9th of June, would require five VP locations or five VPs to be accrued or eight for a sudden death victory. So I was thinking, okay, let's have a look at that. Now we know that the British beaches uh, and the Canadians landed over here and they attempted to take Khan and uh, Khan was a very difficult uh, battle to be fought there. And that's represented in this game by the victory points. So victory points are four per hex all the way through to uh, now I just got to check that because I think it goes down uh, over time. Yeah, so through the 9th, uh, through the 15th basically, it, uh, it is 4 per hex. On the 15th, they drop to 3 per hex, per hex. then the 30th, they drop to 2 each uh, hex. And the 15th of July, it becomes 1. Let me just move that back there. It becomes one VP per hex, right? So that's an interesting situation. So if, if one hex could be secured and in supply, you've got to be in supply when you secure them, which is one of the mistakes I made with, well, I didn't actually make a mistake because I still had a full turn to get my unit in supply, but one of the VP locations I secured in the, the Omaha game, the guy was out of supply. Uh, Bayou is one VP for the entire location, I believe. Is that correct? No, one each, right? So there's four and one for Khan would make eight. So if you were able to capture Khan and all of Bayou by the ninth, you would get an automatic victory, arguably, right? Uh, you've, got <clears throat> you've got this other little uh, village here that could be captured for one. Trevier's here is uh, two VP, and I can attest to the difficulty of getting to that uh, by the by by the PM 9th. That would be a bit of a stretch, and I would hazard unless things went extremely well. That's not achievable by the PM by the 9th 
night of uh, the PM turn if uh, uh, if things played out how they did previously. And of course, over on this side, uh, Utah Beach, there's a couple of locations as well, which I don't I have no familiarity with how they may play out there, but they look uh, they look equally challenging to obtain. Uh, of course, there's Cherbourg in the distance on the far left hand side, and that uh, has its own unique VP considerations. It's a sliding scale from nine points down uh, down to a certain turn, and then from there, uh, wherever those points are, may act though they may actually end up accruing to the to the Germans or to coming off the uh, the American uh, the Allied capture uh, VP rate. <clears throat> so now, if we start looking beyond the 9th of June in terms of VP allocations, assuming that all these are, these are all still you know if you capture them by the 9th, you're going to put them in the bank, right? They're going to go towards the accruals. You get five for these guys over here by the 15th, if you can get there, five each. Come down here, you can pick up eight for capturing St. Lowe. We scoot across a little bit more, and now we can see uh, a three, a four, and a five in the center map. We can see that uh, that looks pretty attractive there as well. Uh, so this is uh, Bella Roy and Tilly, and uh, Villers Bocage. All right. uh, that's all just to the west or south of uh, south of uh, south of Khan here, right? And then, uh, then I guess that's it. Gets even more interesting. If we come down here. There are ten VPs available uh, the fifteenth of July. If we get to this location, which is sort of the the nub of the or the, the tail end of the or the head, I should say, of the fillets gap, right? And uh, here's fillets. Here you would get ten VPs for it. Argentan would also accrue ten VPs. We scoot across over to this. Uh, I guess the eastern part of the map. I need a compass where I'm a little disoriented here. Uh, then 7.30, we, we would subtract five off this 10 number, but 7.15, July 15th, we would get 10, whoops, 10, 10, five, and another 10 here. So, what does that look like if we start? Let me turn this light off a little bit here. So, if we step back, oh well, I guess you probably want to know what the what the drop dead is for the sudden death is for July the 15th is 40 VPs and a win would be 28. So just looking and assuming, I'm assuming this is all cumulative, you know, you could pick up four, maybe seven victory points in Khan. If you only got a couple of hexes, a handful of these would give you 10, right? 10, 11, 12. And then as long as things didn't get too out of hand in Cherbourg and you kept it, let's just call it neutral, that would leave us with 30 VPs that we would need to pick up across this uh, huge area of the map. And there's obviously, you know, there's nine right there, another seven there. And if you're going to come down this way and try and create the fillet's pocket, you have to capture these guys here anyway. But then you've got this opportunity to pick up 30 VPs right here, right? One, two, three. And that would just about do it. So you can pretty much understand how this, uh, how the vitric conditions are, are sort of leading you to the, uh, you know, the maybe it's the easy win or maybe it's the historical uh, result, right? Uh, trying to lead you to the fastest route to VPs, which is this open area here. And then looking at this through all of this uh, farmland and bocage. Wow, that's 
you know, ripe pickings here. There's three, there's 38 VPs right here, right there in that L shape uh, along great roads, but difficult to get to unless you secure St. Low early and, and lock that down, right? Uh, otherwise you're going to have supply, supply challenges. You know, this set of roads here is critical. Obviously Khan is critical if you want to get down to the, to the fillets area. And this becomes particularly important as well. So it's an interesting little, uh, exercise that if we go through and set all this up, you know, the allies will have to work out how they're going to structure their offense. And obviously the, the flip side of all that is the, the Germans are going to have to work out how will they prevent the Allies from achieving their goals, whatever they may be. And we might actually just write up some rough guidelines for plans for both sides and use that as a, a sort of a wireframe to, to guide our solo play so we don't just run around willy-nilly. And we might even, we might, we might even roll uh, for what the plan should be and work out a way to uh, allow adjustments to that plan. Kind of like a tactical combat series, writing your plans out and, and sticking with the plan. And we'll see what might happen with that. So that might give us something uh, interesting to work on over the next few days as we grind through the, uh, well, not the lockdown, because we're not locked down here in Texas yet, but uh, through this uh, quiet time. All right, all the best. Hope everyone's having a good day. Stay safe, keep your hands clean, and keep tuned in because I will be pushing out as much quality content, or what I call quality content, as possible so that you guys are entertained. And uh, what you really should be doing though is not watching my videos or reading my blog. You should be rolling your own dice. So go do that, roll dice.